Very good morning, everyone. Welcome to Admiral Markets. We're going to take a look at moving average trading in today's webinar. And uh, let's see, it's the first or the second day of March, in fact. So our, our first one that we're looking to get on this webinar. So let's see what the month of uh, March has to bring to us. We can also take a look a bit at the weekly, monthly candles. Some, in some cases, I don't want to bore you with looking at every one of them, but it would be good uh, always to take a look at that because uh, they do have sometimes interesting info. Anyhow, we'll discuss that later. First of all, though, as you know, we're going to take a look at this PowerPoint and explain the disclaimer. This uh, material is been, has been made for and is, has been made for a global audience. It may not be suitable uh, for everyone, so take to that uh, into consideration. To get the corresponding info and charting conditions in any detail, take a look at AdmiralMarketsGlobal.com. Then, of course, the risk disclaimer explaining that trading for exchange and global financial markets is considered high risk and may not be suitable for all investors. Please seek the advice of an independent financial advisor for more information on that. And this webinar is for educational purposes only. So by continuing with this webinar, you agree with the risks are involved and that those are yours to take. And you also agree with the risk disclaimer content. Good. So thanks for your attention again. So we got these five steps that we're going to take a look at. We're going to take a look at trends. Or, or define the trend because <clears throat> depends of course we can trade it uh, with the trend against the trend or a range but in all cases it's good to define the trend because we need to know what kind of environment there is going on then we can look for an opportunity we check if there are any filters we establish what is the trigger and if there's a different entry method so that's a rough uh, rough trading plan a very quick one for our webinar today and the specific tool or indicator of our focus will be moving averages in today's session. Good. With that said, let me head over to the calendar here. We had an interest rate announcement and RBA rate statement. The uh, odd weekend pretty uh, pretty roughly, pretty substantially with that statement. Odd USD, especially Euro odd, went up a lot. <clears throat> Let's take a look at that on the charts in a second. But uh, we have in 11 minutes, we have Spanish unemployment change and otherwise light news throughout the day. Let me take a look at the rest of the week. PMI services pound tomorrow, ADP. We have on Wednesday CAD interest rate announcement. So we got some major ones tomorrow. And uh, Thursday, two euro and pound interest rate and press conference. And on Friday, we have non-farm payroll and unemployment rate. So the rest of the week is quite eventful. Alrighty, folks. So this is the euro dollar. We had a big move up Friday. Last time we talked was Thursday morning. So let me take a look. That was 20... 7th in the morning, let's see. That was somewhere here. Oh, yeah. So, unfortunately, well, not unfortunately, but uh, let's see. Let me take a look. Let's put on the moving averages, by the way. Let's see. Here, around one hour after New York opened, we got the upside. And for those of you who are wondering, yeah, but you know, it stayed a couple of hours because I was saying it, if it stays below the open, the uh, the initial open of Thursday, we could see more downside. But that is true. But what thing that happened is is that it just took very long before we got that downside. Don't forget that it was 10:15 when I said that, and. Um, 11 o'clock, we had two hours below the initial low, but five hours later, we still didn't break down, right? So that is valid, but if it takes really five hours and it still just goes sideways, then the whole thing is, is, is not moving down. It should go down in those five hours, and if it doesn't, then uh, this explains the upside then. No sellers, that means it's, it's, it's uh, an opposite situation. It's a bit difficult to discuss all these scenarios, you know, five hours from now. But if you ever see this and you and you have 
doubts about uh, how long it's taking, then just stay out. Let's put an ask later on it. Or exit in that case, if you're already in. Also, we can see we never actually broke the 50-minute fractal here. So that's one more thing you can look at. So I'm not sure if anyone uh, was looking for Thursday for that short, but uh, it, uh, it really didn't materialize. Then we got the opposite because of the divergence, etc. We we're also in a bigger four-hour uptrend, so it's something to be aware of, right? Because look at that four-hour uh, chart. We can see prices close to those moving averages, right? You can see that here. So we got the bounce there. So that's why we got some support. Always be uh, be aware of the fact that even though there could be some trend going on on one time frame, it not might not be so on the, another time frame. Okay. So we got the bounce, we got the bull flag, and a follow through on Friday. Then we gapped with uh, the weekend down, and we got some follow through on Monday. And now we're getting a bounce. So. Now, obviously, this is a tough spot for the euro because of the fact that we are close to resistances on the euro dollar here. Not that difficult to see. I think most of you probably saw that. If not, then you can just look at these tops like this, and you can see those resistances here on the left, right? Look here and here. But also on the weekly chart, I don't want to bore you necessarily with the weekly chart here, but or even monthly, you can put on the trend line like this, and what do you see? The resistance kicking in right here, right? So that's a potential trend line we have to keep an eye on. Now, if that one gets broken, the next trend line we can take a look at is this one, right? And there could be a gap up here to trade to the upside, but that's only when we break the resistances. When we break through the 139 level that we could expect some upside probably roughly speaking to 143. For the moment that we still have this trend line that's still in play. And you can see on this chart, although it's a very long time frame chart, price is using the blue band here as a support and the short term moving averages are, as, are actually kind of like used as a uh, as a resistance in some cases you can see here and here. Here. Sure, we had some peaks above it, but those didn't go too far either. So this could be similar again. Let's see. Anyhow, weekly chart is trending up. You can see prices above the green moving averages. So back to the daily. Close to resistance. And then the four hour, you can see. Well, one thing we should say about the daily still is the fact that we had a pin bar here and a good bullish candle follow through. Yesterday was an inside candle. So that is uh, another bullish signal there um, for the euro dollar, for our chart. Sorry, let me just write back Alexon Alexander, who's asking about the moving averages. I just uh, wrote the values to you there, okay? It's in the chat. So the four-hour chart, uh, you can see we had a bounce here, followed through, now getting a hook back. So it does seem like a bouncing spot to me. Now, does the bouncing spot, it could be lower too. If you put a fib on this very downside first correction here, we already went to these targets of this first correction. So that could be already a bouncing spot right there. So in that regard, we're also back to the hourly moving averages. So if we see a break above the, the, the shorter moving average, the 34 EMA, then I wouldn't be surprised to see some follow through here to the upside. If we put a FIB, we're roughly at the 50 FIB. Now obviously there's always still the possibility for this to go a bit lower before we maybe bounce up. But either here or here, roughly support areas for some upside, I would expect. Looking at the structure of the market, looking at various elements put together. Let's take a look at the 15-minute chart here. 
and you can see we're already above the moving averages. We just need to get some follow through. So something like this, a, a break above this trend line, for instance, a break above these tops would, be, for me, indicate the follow through. Let's take a look at what the uh, initial high was of the day. Okay, we broke that high at the European Open about an hour ago. No, sorry, prior to one hour prior to the European Open. Excuse me. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight candle above it. Let's see. This is a there is a potential for price to use. I would say maybe these levels in here, these tops of support. If price does bounce off it and the moving averages here, then that could be a bouncing spot for upside. And if we then break above it, of, above orange and above those 50 minute tops, that could be a confirmation. So that would be the 50 minute world. Uh, what we're looking for, let's take a look at 30. Nothing much different there. Five minutes spike gap and consolidation ever since. But obviously, if you look at the five minute world, any price movement back is a retracement. Why is it a retracement? Because price is moving back to the moving averages. You can easily distinguish on every, any time frame and every time frame whether price is trending or retracing. If price is moving back to the moving averages and they're all aligned and, and you know, set in one direction, then that's a retracement, even on a five-minute world. If, uh, if price is moving away from them, then it's moving with the trend. Very simple. Doesn't have to be complicated, right? So now we're retracing on this five-minute world, and you can see that we could bounce off those moving averages. So that could be one way of going along, for instance, but that would be an early uh, trade because there's no confirmation that we'll bounce there. If we get some confirmation, that would be a second way. And if we break above the red-orange trend line, that would be the confirmation, and that would be the third way of entry. <clears throat> so at any point in time, at any point of analysis, there's certainly not one, just only one way to enter. There's always multiple methods of entry. And it depends how early you want to be, or how fast you want to be, or how patient you want to be, or how much confirmation you want whether you enter one, two, which one of those. Just like when you have break, pullback, and continue, right? You got multiple methods of tackling debt. So I, I think that's, that's it from uh, my perspective on the euro dollar. But considering this slow downside day yesterday after the pretty big upside, considering the big trend up, the structure looks uh, bullish to me. Now, if I would be wrong and pr we would not break above this orange and price would start to break down like this and start to make a, a bear flag, a break of that bear flag is certainly nothing wrong with trading that to the downside, right? But for the moment, I wouldn't be looking at downside unless I see clearer price action signals that uh, we are getting a turnaround here. So I hope that's clear. If you have any questions, let me know. I definitely don't mind uh, interactive uh, sessions, OK? So let's take a look at this pound dollar. So I took a small buy just uh, as an informative trade to show you what I was to, to show you what I was thinking of this morning um, because this to me looked like a bouncing spot on the pound dollar. Why was that? <clears throat> well, because we were at this trend line, first of all. Well, there are a lot of reasons, but I don't want to bore you with all of them maybe, but this was a big impulse, as you know, last week. But OK, it did take very, very long before we finally got a turn, right? Right in here, we have the circle. Then we got to bounce up. Again, a correction bull flag. Then we got an upside. Then we got again a correction. So it's going very slowly, but still, we were back at support. Okay, so that was one of the reasons. And I'm still expecting a break of this top at one point or another. Now the market is trying to make it messy. The market is making a messy move here and a lot of consolidation and it could take very long before we break that top. 
and we might even move down lower. We might even go, if I go to take a look at the four hour chart, who knows? We could go, no one knows, in fact, but we could even go to the 50 fib because we bounced off the 38.2 fib. We can even go to the 50 fib before we break that top. But a break of this top is, in my opinion, a decent statistical probability. Not always will it happen, but uh, there's a good chance. And why? Let's put the oscillator on. You can see there's a very strong oscillator reading. So that was the main reason, of course, plus the entire uptrend of the daily chart. Uh, so that was one of the main reasons here. The bullish daily uptrend, in fact, or even weekly uptrend, well, it doesn't, I mean, it doesn't really matter, but just to prove or show that uh, what kind of um, trend you can have uh, sometimes. And this is pound dollar is, is definitely bullish. So we have also, besides the uptrend, of course, on the higher time frames, we have this impulse. That's, that's just my point. Okay, so let's go back to the, to the hourly and 15-minute world, and we'll take a look at the longer time frames you know, in a second, okay? So the 15-minute world, we had this uh, a lot of mess here at the beginning of the week. The beginning of the weeks are always a bit messy. They're always a bit slow. They always take time to develop. So, you know, I don't like trading that much on, on Mondays unless there's a clear structure. Unless there, I really like something a lot. You can see why. Eventually, finally, we made this, basically, this counter trend move down. After New York lunch, I think, fell about 80 pips, made some consolidation through the night, made in a bit of a follow-through, got the divergence. And when I woke up, I saw it bouncing like this. And because of the divergence, because they were close on the 15-minute world, or 5-minute world, as you can see here, right? Uh, you can see clearly divergence. Why is that? What is divergence? Price is making a lower low, but the oscillator is not making a lower low. You can see the oscillator here is, is higher than the previous bottom, right? So we have a lower high on the oscillator, but a lower low on price. Okay, so just in case you don't know, that's divergence. We had it on a five and a 15 minute world. Plus we're at the bouncing spot. Plus we had a, kind of an a, impulse here with the, well, maybe not a big impulse, but still an up move of which this bottom hasn't been broken yet and this could have been a correction to that. So if we then put a fib on that, we can see we're roughly at the 78.6 fib now, I didn't catch the bounce. I was sleeping, but when I woke up, uh, I did take uh, the, uh, the trade right in here. I took it there, and although I expected a bit of retracement still, I expected a bit of down move, to be honest, but uh, I didn't have the time to really monitor it um, to, you know, to, to, to make it so specific but in theory, one could have put a fib on this. Could have put a pending order there. Uh, you can see it went to the 50 fib here of this smaller five minute move up. Anyhow, this is very small, I know, but I took it actually right in here and I knew that there was a potential for this retrace before going up, but I, because it was such a small time frame, I, I decided to ignore that. But you can see it did go to the 50 fib and then is bouncing ever since. So my entry was there. My stop loss is 12 pips below this bottom, I think. And I just wanted to give it space, just in case there was a bit, one more five-minute dip that would break this bottom. But usually, if a, if a bottom gets broken on the pound, it wouldn't do so more than eight pips. So that's why I put the stop loss 12 pips below that. 12 pips below this bottom. Okay, just in case it would, because the structure was bearish. There were reasons to expect upside um, regarding higher time frames, but you don't know, you can always get a double divergence on the smaller time frame, see this dip, the bottom gets broken by five pips, and then we see this upside. So that's why I put the, trust, uh, the stop loss 12 pips below that. Uh, the TP is empty indeed because I will be using a trail stop, and that's because I expect bigger upside, so I don't want to limit myself at the moment with the TP. I want to see how price is responding here. It's doing well. It's doing like what I expected, so that's good. So let's see how far it can go. As I said, I'm expecting a break of this top 
and then the target would be minus 272 at 169. So that would be my TP eventually, probably. So that would, if I get there, it would be like 300 and uh, 300 pip reward for 30 risk. That would be pretty cool. Let's see. That's a big if, of course. But if it happens, a 10 to 1 is never, never a bad thing. <laughs> Always good for the equity curve, right? But uh, that's a long way to go, though. Now, we have this resistance line here on the 50-minute world, so price is surely bound to uh, eventually stop there. So I would be careful. I wouldn't want to necessarily go long here, personally. There will be some stop here, because if you look at how the upside has already progressed in this early morning, I mean, for the pound to move 50 pips up like this fast is quite a lot um, for, for such an early start, right? I mean, for such an early point in the day. So, uh, which is good for anyone who's long because it does, in my opinion, kind of semi-confirm the potential to the upside because of this aggressive up move, but still, it has a long way to go, as as well as this trend line here that is close by. So I'm not. Sh I, I don't think it will continue forever. Obviously, <laughs> nothing will, and nothing does. But would expect uh, some upside if we break above this trend line. So something like maybe a pause here, one more upside to the trend line, then another pause, and then a potential another break would make sense. Which one would be the best to trade if you didn't trade it from the bottom there? then I would think at the moment it would best make sense to wait for uh, the trend line to break after a pause. If this move goes up and breaks through the trend line in one go, I wouldn't be interested because we already had such a big up move. I would want to see retracement first, some kind of bull flag, and then the break of that bull flag, basically. But most likely that bull flag will happen at the trend line. Yeah, uh, Alexander is asking if it's uh, too late to get in right now. Actually, yes, indeed. That's that's my answer to that. I didn't see your question until now, but would rather wait a bit. Or if it even if it doesn't hit the trend line, uh, a pullback, for instance, to these moving averages, and one could try to see if there's a bounce here as a uh, a first early scale in to trade it up to that trend line if you don't want to wait for the break of the trend line. Let's take a look at the five minute. Let's see, this is the initial days, today's high here at 166.69. We broke that. Let's see. We're above that already for two, four, six, eight candles. That's looking pretty bullish. So I would say there's a decent chance that any dips are buying opportunities from upside at the moment. Let's see. That's what I would think at the moment. It's always good to you, you know wait for some confirmation in this zone. If once it gets this low, might not even get that low, but maybe it, probably there will always be. A decent dip, so I think that's a pretty decent chance. <clears throat> uh, Claudio is saying maybe some political news. Yeah, certainly it could happen. Indeed, that could be the reason. But the uh, the thing is that although I'm interested in in economic and political news, I don't kind of take the trouble to connect them personally. But there could be, I mean, definitely some uh, connection there. Obviously, market 
response to that. But my personal way of tackling things is that whatever the news or politics are at the time, um, the some aggregate impact will influence right the price. So whatever the opinion is, I will see that reflected in price. So by looking at price, I see the uh, the opinion of the average market participants. So that's that's why. But there could be definitely that cause indeed, especially if, if indeed political news like uh, Russian President Putin ordering troops to return their, to their bases, for instance. Indeed. Alrighty. Sorry, I'm just writing someone who asked a question but has left in the meantime. But um, so sometimes I'm just not answering your question immediately because I want to finish my uh, my analysis. So if you don't see a question answered right away, don't get discouraged. Don't leave right away. <laughs> um, so let's see. This pond is moving really up a lot. Seem to uh, have accelerated the last minute or so since we're talking. Wow. But anyhow, the, the problem is with trading it here is is that um, it's difficult with the stop loss. If you have resistance so close by, and your risk is very very uh, big, so the reward to risk that ratio there is. Uh, is very uh, awkward, is, is very negative, right? You got a few pips left to the resistances and you're risking a lot because you have to put your stop loss on a five minute world, the next support level is maybe here and that's a shaky one, right? The better one is here. So you can see you'll be risking all that for maybe a bit of a reward like that. So that's a negative balance, that's not good. The only way to really trade it would be as a scalper, but even as a scalper, I don't think it's even possible here because the again the last fractal is here. So this trade is is is, is no trade for for anyone who looks at this balance, in my opinion. Unless you're maybe trading a daily chart, a massive weekly chart or something like that and uh, you're a big position trader and you see this bounce here and you're late to the party and you put your stop loss all the way here or something like that, I don't know. <clears throat> that could make sense, maybe, but even then I would still wait, but if you're trading intraday, it wouldn't make much sense, I think, personally. So, Claudio also says the same indeed, the move is too powerful at the moment. So, maybe some of you joined me, then uh, at the bottom, then you're very happy, right, at the moment. Let's see, 50, 56 at the moment. Anyhow, let's take a look at the hourly. What does that all mean now that we looked at the inter, kind of like the upcoming um, intraday pound dollar expectations, right? Any dips could be upside, I would say, at the moment, certainly after this strong move up. Uh, and the fact that we've already uh, exited and stayed above the initial high and low of the day within the, uh, made in the Japan, or the uh, Asian session, I should say, uh, Tokyo session. What can we expect in the long term? Well, as I said, expecting a break of this top. First of all, we need a break of this triangle, because if you look at the orange trend lines, we're in a triangle. So first, a break of the triangle, and then a break of the top. Let's take a look at the four hour, although it's taking massively long, I understand that, but um, I wouldn't change my opinion unless, Basically, these moving averages got broken and the 50 fib. Then I would start seeing it as a bearish four hour chart setup. Okay, so other than that, the structure is bullish. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean we, you know, it's good to, to trade here right now, uh, of course. In all cases, the trend is just part of the analysis. 
but the structure is bullish, okay, unless we break the 50, the moving averages on the four hour chart and the 50 fib. So the daily, you can see also bullish prices above the moving averages. I don't have to explain that too much, right, because it's clear. And you can see that um, we had some bullish candles here. Yesterday could be a, a retracement day because if you look at the weekly ch chart here, you can see that last week was a small bullish candle, but it was bullish. And yesterday's retracement actually was retracing last week's bullish candle. And when you get close to a higher low, such as a weekly low, that is a potential bouncing spot. And that's what we saw at the beginning of this morning, the bounce off of that the support level. Okay, so that's a quick uh, long-term discussion. Also, the monthly chart, if you look at that, you can see last month was a bullish candle that engulfed January's bearish candle. And if you look at this uptrend, we've had a wick here, but otherwise up, up, inside candle, or kind of an inside candle, up, up, kind of an inside candle, up. So five out of seven were very nice bullish candles. Last month, two, although it had a very small wick at top, but it was a relatively small one. <clears throat> so that downside yesterday could have been a retracement of even the monthly candle. Let's see. It doesn't have to be, though. We could see up, then down, retrace deeper the monthly candle, and then move up. But it could be the retracement of the monthly candle. So that's the very long picture. Bjorn is saying sell now, or that was actually three minutes ago. And maybe he saw this wick right at that trend line. Yep, that is a potential, um, well, potential retracement trade. I wouldn't expect this downside to really go too far for the moment because um, maybe, for instance, down to uh, 166. 167 maybe, 166.90, because we don't have divergence even on the one hour, one minute chart, sorry. Not that one minute is a great chart to, uh, to do analysis on, I'm not saying, but if you want to look at divergence, which is still a valuable info, I think, that we don't have that on the one minute chart, so I think that we'll probably even see, even if we see a retracement here, we'll probably see one more dip up or move up, sorry. <laughs> so let's see. We could get a, a smaller bull flag like this. In any case, if we don't break this top within 30 minutes, then we might see a bigger retracement indeed going like this. Could get a retracement back to, for instance, uh, well, it could be various levels, in fact. That's the problem. We don't know which one exactly, but the 38.2 FIB, for instance, or the 50 FIB are the primary candidates, I would say, before we get upside again. So this could be the start of that correction indeed. But it could also be like this, one more up, and then we start the correction. That's why those retracements, those um, these types of trades are a bit difficult. Yeah, yeah, no, for me it was just, this is uh, an account to what I use to show trades ideas to you, indeed. So it's just, uh, instead of saying I thought, you know, I, instead of saying I took a trade there, I thought it would be better to, to, to have it on the, on the screen so you can see when and where I took it. But this is just an example indeed. That's why it's a small uh, lot and it is a long indeed, just in case someone cannot read it. It's a buy indeed with a stop loss here with the red dotted line and there's no TP, it's a trail, trail stop using uh, for the moment, actually, the four-hour world probably. But if we get closer to the target, 
I uh, will probably use the one hour chart. Or maybe even the 15 minute world if we really get close to one, uh, 170. The closer I get to the target, the tighter the trading stop will become. Um, so that's something we discussed last Thursday, by the way. If you're curious, take a look at the archive, okay? Or let me show you where that is. You can take a look by going to admiralmarkets.com, go to uh, education, go to webinars. Then you have the upcoming webinars where you can sign up by clicking on the blue button. For instance, tomorrow, trend lines. Tomorrow evening, you got price action trading with Nenet, for instance. And uh, if you want to look at the archive, go to video archive, and then you can see that we talked about, let me see where that was. I don't think it has been uploaded yet. Not yet. Okay, it hasn't been uploaded yet, but soon it will. We talked about trade management stuff. I think it was scaling in, scaling out to be precise. But Alrighty. So let's move on. So in any case, that's my that's my uh, plan. Oh, YouTube, it's already available. Vikantas is saying, I think. So could be there already if you want to take a look. I wasn't aware of that. Uh, thanks, Vikantas. So um, let's see. So that's the trail management idea. Euro pound is moving down. Odd USD is a bit funny because it had such a big, big bearish candle during the news event. It had a first and up, massive down, and it's been crawling up ever since. Looking pretty, pretty strange, in fact. Let me put the moving averages on. I can see we're missing those. Let me just add the AO here. Ah, there it is. So where to start on this time frame? I don't know. <clears throat> maybe maybe let's start with the four hour view. Yeah, that's maybe not a bad idea. Well, first of all, we have this resistance spot that we definitely couldn't break through. That itself was a 38.2 fib. All right, so that 38.2 fib acted as resistance on this daily chart, and we can see that price stopped there. Price has been uh, been choppy ever since, so the downside hasn't got much follow through. There was a break of this support, but that bro that break uh, was choppy. We did get a, a break, pullback, a continue. With a continue, uh, didn't go too far. And uh, while well, we've been very choppily moving up, and roughly staying below this trend line, and the long-term moving averages as a resistance, <clears throat> but it's not uh, really moving anywhere. So. At the moment, I would say probably looking for a break below these moving averages, a break below this trend line, or from a contrarian point of view, even looking for a break above this trend line uh, would be the lines in the sand, roughly speaking, because uh, at the moment, the price is moving back to the moving averages, and we know that that is a retracement. So looking either for a break to the upside or a break to the downside. At the moment, price is moving back up towards resistance, so that could be a resistance spot as well. So um, let's take a look at that point on the 50-minute chart. <clears throat> Although the one-hour you, oh, sorry about that. Although the one-hour chart is showing that we're moving up toward resistance, we can see that on the 50-minute chart, the there's no really any 
clear guidance here. All the moving averages are crossed over each other. So it looks more like a range, a clear range here. So if price does get closer up to this to this level, there could be a bouncing spot for downside. If you're a range trader, that's something you might want to be interested in. Uh, not sure what you mean, Dabur. Do you hear me? Does anyone else hear and see the screen properly? Dabur is having some problems. Okay. Thank you so much all for your for your answers there. So I wrote Davar, oh Davar has left already. Sound could be a bit better. <clears throat> Let's see. Could be my voice in the early morning here. <laughs> um, let's see. Should be Should be the correct one here. Let me check. Yeah, it looks like the correct correct mic. So, not sure what that could be. Strange. Although the uh, the the sound menu changed, so. I'm still looking to see if I can find some other option that would indicate what the sound is here. Let me see. Uh, so it should be the same one indeed. Yeah. So no idea why that is so, uh, but <clears throat> It looks like I have the right uh, microphone settings. Plus the uh, the mic is pretty close by, so should be as always. Not sure what the reason is. Could be indeed. Vigante says maybe there's an other program slowing down the internet connection. So that could be it. Maybe if we we bump into resistance here, there could be some uh, downside. All right. I'm not too big of a fan of these trades personally, but I can see that that's possible. So something for a heads up for those who like that. Let's zoom out again to the one hour because the 50 minutes chart is so choppy that uh, I don't think it really makes sense to keep an eye on that. Uh, let's see hourly, as I said, these two lines in the sand at the moment. How about the four hour? Also pretty interesting uh, situation because it's such a mess here on the four hour as well break above could mean back in the uptrend that we had here. A break below could mean that maybe this momentum is back in play. So that's the thing we have to keep an eye on. Let's take a look at the daily. If we zoom in, you can see price had divergence and went back to the long-term moving average. And what do we say? What is the minimum goal if there is divergence? The minimum goal with divergence is that price goes back to the long-term moving average. So it has reached its, its minimum goal. And uh, when it moved down, after hitting those long-term moving average, it did bump into the 34 EMA support. And that's what's holding it at the moment. So if we break below this level here, we're basically also breaking below the 34 EMA support. So personally, I'm very interested in this downside continuation. Uh, the upside, I trust less. I'm not saying there couldn't be an upside above here, but the potential seems more limited. Davor, do you hear me? Davor is having some problems with connecting, apparently.
or ask him to write uh, customer service otherwise. Not sure what I can do for him really. Okay, so Dabra is going to reconnect again. So the upside I didn't uh, like, I mean, there is the potential to break up here. I'm not a big fan of it as yet, personally. I like the downside break more. Um, if it does break up, I wouldn't trade it immediately. I would rather wait for the break, let it develop, take a look at how it looks like, see if we get a, a, a for instance, a bull flag, and then the next break might be a bit better up to the next resistance. But the better trade to the upside would definitely be above this 38.2 fib up to the 50 fib. I think anything below that is still a bit risky there, and the better one is probably below to the up to the downside here for the moment. Either above the 38.2 fib or below this support. Anything in here is a bit riskier. Let's see. Uh, Adrian was talking about divergence on the audios D. Yeah, there was one hour divergence indeed, for instance, and we did go back to the long to moving average. So the minimum goal for that one hour divergence has already been met. Let's take a look at the four hour chart if there's been divergence. There was divergence between the tops here. That also we saw price go back to the moving averages already. Alrighty, so let's take a look at the dollar yen. Last month was more or less small bearish candle. Looks quite like a doji. Weekly chart last week was bearish. Three weeks in a row we just went sideways with the dollar yen. Not too exciting here. Very choppy. That happened after the pin bar. This pin bar is still in play. Could still be an important level in fact. An important price action signal. Uh, okay, Bjorn, thanks for being here. Always great to, to see your comments, by the way. Let's see. Uh, yeah, sure, Bjorn. You can always email me. No problem at all. I don't know if you have my email. I'll just type it there just in case you don't have it. Just in case. There it is, okay? Have a great day, too. I hope the trading goes well. So basically, this uh, this this dollar yen weekly, very messy still, and um, looking for more guidance. Basically, we did break the support line, so let's take a look at the daily. You can see we broke through that uh, magenta line here. Let me zoom in. You can see that break there. Got some follow through. The price is bouncing here to the upside after testing this bottom. So I'm not a big fan of this dollar yen at the moment. I would rather be in a wait and see mode for the moment. That was that was the pattern that we were in. All right. So now we broke out of that, but we could still be in a bouncing spot. The whole thing is quite choppy. You know, there are two things that could happen here. Basically, we're bouncing off this 50 fib for tremendous upside up to 110, 111. Or this was just a correction for one more downside down to 1020, maybe 1199, maybe for instance, or even lower. Or maybe these levels could be the bouncing spot. So those are the key lines in the sand. For the moment, though, um, I'm just cautious. I would rather wait for a break to the upside here or a break below support before trading it either way. But then still I'm cautious with the 61.8 fib.
Let's take a look at the hourly. You can see we're getting a, a bit of an upside bounce here. There's this resistance line that's uh, close by. So a break of that maybe could give an idea that uh, we're back in the up mode and there could be some breakout trade to the upside here. Not a big fan of that as yet because it's, it's quite early. Let's put the moving averages on to get an idea. I forgot about that. You can see why that's early because if you put the trend line here connecting these tops, we bump into these moving averages. So what I really would like to see on this four hour chart is a break above these tops and this four hour long term moving average. Okay, I would like to see price move above it, move hook back to it and bounce. That's what I would like to see on the four hour chart here on the dollar yen. And then there's a higher likelihood of uh, uptrend continuing. Pound yen has been very choppy, very, very choppy. Right below this resistance line and below above this support line, we've had a lot of mess up and down, a lot of spikes up and down. So pound yen is not something I find interesting at the moment. If you look at the four hour chart though, you can see a break above this purple line could be a breakout trade to the upside. So that's something that I'm keeping an eye on. It would be, of course, something of a, of a major uh, trade to the upside. So depends on what time frames you trade it, how you want to trade it. But that would be the concept here that uh, one could look for, break to the upside here. Other than that, I'm not really interested in anything at the moment because if I zoom into lower time frames, it's just you'll see that messiness and choppiness. And we're about halfway that zone, about uh, halfway this downtrend channel. So at the moment, not too interested in the pound yen. Euro yen, Probably the same story, to be honest. We had some falls last week that were pretty good. Then some spike up again. Gapped down, then up. Pretty messy. Not too interested at the moment. Trading breakouts on this chart uh, would be the same, yes. Yep, same as the pound yen, but looking for a break of magenta then to the upside here. Or, or there's always the potential, of course, to break support too below here. That would be the long-term uh, directional view I'm looking at. But from an intraday point of view, because price is so choppy and price is so meddling about between those magenta lines, that uh, in my opinion, it's not worth looking for intraday trades on, on these pairs. But I will keep uh, an eye on the long-term picture, indeed, on this four-hour world for break either way. Uh, to see uh, when we can break out of this consolidation and then things start to change. It could be interesting to trade on all time frames again. But for the moment, I only see an interest in four hour or higher going lower into time frames like an hourly, 50 minute world, um, not too interesting. Now, it could change again if you look at the five and one minute. Those are again different time frames in different worlds. Um, Let's see, the hourly, this is the 30 minute chart. 30 minute chart looks like we've had a pretty big upside. We could see some retracement here, down to the moving averages again, but that's a risky business. My uh, one minute chart here is, uh, isn't showing extra, you know, accurate information here. Ah, now it is. Ah, is that a gap? Hmm? That's weird. Yeah, something, something isn't right with that. So I can't look at the one minute. But uh, the five minute world, hmm. Five minute rule looks like an impulse and this looks like a correction, which means we could see upside, I guess. But the thing is, as I said, this is trading something halfway a zone like that. I'm not that big of a fan of that. So I would personally, no, anything below four hour doesn't seem interesting to me on this uh, euro yen either. So how about the odd yen?
Yeah, no problem, Alexander. Of course, someone could see it differently, right? This is just my view of things. Maybe someone has a, a specific strategy that they trade, and that strategy is being activated right now, right here. Then uh, you know, that strategy could still work out fine, but from a discretionary point of view, which we'll be we'll talking about discretionary trading in Thursday's webinar, by the way, Thursday evening, uh, don't see the reason to do so indeed. So Adyen, well, yeah, <laughs> not, uh, not very that interesting to me, but looking at this time frame. But um, we can see there have been some uh, down attempts. Price has gone back to the moving averages, though. Looks like we're heading back to resistance. as you can see. Yeah, certainly looks like we're heading back to resistance, in fact. But uh, you know how much the downside could be. We don't know. The, the resistance could also be way higher. It could be you know this upside could bring us all the way to the seven eight point six fib. So I would be cautious with this Aussie, and I don't think it's really that great at the moment. Maybe some price action signal, rejection signal here could be interesting. Otherwise, I don't know. Um, let's see, pound odd. Hit the 61.8 fib here. Had a breakout last week to the upside. Now getting a pretty decent retracement back. So that could be a bouncing spot on this hourly chart. This is the four hour chart. And um, we can see that there's potential to bounce. We broke above these resistances. So they can become support again. Let me zoom in there. You can see these resistances turning into support, potentially. We had engulfing four-hour twins here, although just barely. Not that strong of a price action signal, but still. Daily chart is obviously up, uptrend here. Plus, we have a first daily candle above the 34 EMA here. So, you know, that's a potential uh, breakout right there on the daily chart. Let's see. This is pound out weekly. We had a bullish candle last week, and the close of that candle was very near the high. So that normally indicates that the buyer stayed in control throughout the week, right? Um, that's always interesting information, especially on the higher time frame. Not so much on the five-minute chart, obviously, but if you look at where the close is in relationship to the higher low, and if the close is close to that, that signals that uh, the buyers or sellers stayed in control. So that could have some good influence or impact on, uh, on price action. Not always. It isn't rocket science. It isn't everything, right? Because I can give you an example here right now, right, right here, of a candle with this red dot that had a close very near the high and still the week after was bearish. So I'm not saying that this is, this is necessarily gold or always working, but it does give an indication. You just have to use it in combination with other, other things. This week, for instance, we have the blue dots. Those had strong, uh, had closes near the highs, and those indeed got a good follow through, right? 
So, but uh, here again, there's an example not, right? So it depends. But it's a decent information, I think. And uh, last week definitely <clears throat> closed with a bullish close near the high. <clears throat> the candle was a bit smaller though. So this downside could be a retracement of last week's, um, basically last week's uh, bullish candle. And if you look at the four hour chart, we can see that we hit the 61.8 fib. Down to the hourly here, we can see that price bounced off the 61.8. The confirmation will be if price goes back above the 34 EMA. And the 50 minute world, the 50 minute bars get back above the long term moving average. Because if you look at this 50 minute world, we can see that the 61.8 provided support, but when price bounced, where did it stop? It stopped at this resistance. So this is still resistance, and we need a break above that for this, uh, this upside to get more traction than upside uh, momentum. All right, your odd also the same. Your odd, look at this 50-minute chart. You can see the spike up during the news event, probably uh, the Aussie news event. And when we hit that resistance, price couldn't break through. It has been retracing ever since. So we need to break above that resistance to get a bigger breakout to the upside and break above this this trend line. Then we have a better chance of getting a breakout to the upside. Now that breakout, if we then zoom into the hourly chart, we can see would be a continuation trade, right? Last week, we had a breakout to the upside. So now we can get a continuation. Let me put the AO on. Let's see, I'm just taking a look, folks. I was looking for some particular part of it. Well, it doesn't matter. Anyhow, last week we got a break of, uh, of these trend lines here, and uh, we bounced more, actually a few hours ago, we bounced off that support level. Not only the 61.8, but the trend line as well. So this is looking like a typical break, pull back, and continue. And when can we expect to continue? When we break above the next resistance line. Not only will we be breaking above the resistance line, but we would be breaking above um, this, uh, basically the moving averages as well, as well, right? So we would break two things, confluence, that's always important, the trend line, the magenta trend line, and the red moving averages. That's what we need for this breakout to the upside. If that doesn't happen and we break below green, we could see maybe corrections to the downside and further corrections down. So this is pretty interesting to me. I like this euro odd and pound odd uh, for trades during the day. Whereas I don't like the euro yen and pound yen and dollar yen. And only looking at the bigger time frames to keep an eye on uh, the bigger breakout. In this case, I think that trading it intraday could make sense. Uh, if we uh, either get a bounce from this bottom here or if we break above this, the resistance and we start to make uh, further upside gains. So both for the euro odd and euro uh, pound odd. So let's take a look at the euro pound to see what well, the euro is moving down at the moment. So maybe the pound odd would be better, but um, both have the similar structure in a way. So well, let's see if we get the confirmation. Other than that, let me see which one I missed. We didn't take a look at the CAD. Let's take a look at that now. A dollar cad uh, couldn't break that resistance line there, but also couldn't break the support line right in here. Kind of messy at the moment. Let's look at the 15. You can see within that these magenta lines, we have a smaller wedge as well. 
like this. So a break above that smaller wedge could mean a move up to the bigger wedge, a break below to the bottom of that wedge. But uh, not too big of a fan at the moment of this dollar cat. I would rather wait and see which break we get and see if we get follow through than trading it immediately. Even if we break above this wedge, you can see we're already bumping into bigger resistances there. Also to the downside. So a bit cautious with this dollar cat. Dollar Swissy, let's take a look. Uh, well, let's take a look. Daily chart. Daily chart, uh, maybe even a weekly chart is needed to give an idea how choppy this is. Or we can scrunch up the daily chart. But it is choppy with the downside angle. And uh, But we can see also the fact that every time it breaks the bottom, it doesn't really go too far. Look at this support line right in here. So um, let's see how far this dollar specific can go. Not too big of a fan either of this one. Uh, Kiwi not so nice, very choppy at the moment. We're trying to break to the upside. So for me, the euro odd, pound odd, odd here's the, the euro dollar, pound dollar, are the most interesting I would say today. Dollar specific, dollar cad, dollar yen, pound yen, euro yen, not too interesting, odd yen at the moment. So let's take a look again at the euro dollar, see if there's anything new. We did attempt to go to the upside here. Didn't get any uh, sustainable break as yet. Let's see, this is the pound dollar. And indeed we've had some uh, downside, about half an hour. We hit the 167.02 level at the moment. This is how it looks like on the minute chart, just making some oscillation here. Looking at the minute chart, it uh, seems to be ready that this resistance, or sorry, this retracement could be finished maybe. And we can see maybe some smaller upside. But it's a one minute chart, so. Uh, let's see, Aussie has hit that resistance. And you can see the immediate hit of the resistance causing price to move down. All right, you can see, boom. But now it's pushing again. Let's see if we get a second follow through. Um, now this euro odd and pound odd downside is, 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 is possible, it's just that we are very close to support, right, we bounce up to 61.8, we have this trend line here, so personally I would be very careful at the moment. Are there any questions, by the way, any currency pair you would like to see, otherwise uh, um, I've, I think, discussed things that I would like to share with you personally. So if you have any questions or if you have a pair in mind, let's take a look. No questions so far. I'll just give you a few minutes there, and uh, well, if I don't see anything, then I guess we'll wrap it up. Um, we'll just keep a focus here on the 50-minute chart on the pound dollar at the moment. 
top of the hour we have an hourly candle that closes. You can see that the moving averages are definitely pointed up with a good angle. Let's see if those moving averages get respected if price does start to make a retracement here. After retracement though, as I said, either a bounce off those moving averages or the break uh, or the broken top here or the break above are the two things that uh, one can think of with trading this. Uh, Bob's talking about the top side of pound dollar. I think that Bob is referring to Bob, you're referring to uh, to a target. If you're trading this 15-minute world, then uh, probably I would be wouldn't be want to target too too high. Maybe 167.60. If you're treating it as a swing trade, then you could. I am aiming for at least this minus 272 at 169.77. But it's not realistic to expect that upside, the entire target here to be hit in one day. Right, that wouldn't be that would be pushing it too much. So, what we could expect today still is probably. Let's take a look at the daily candle. It's really a decent daily candle, in fact. That's a bit scary, but uh, so well. I mean, as I said, one sixty six seventy, one sixty seven sixty is already a very big candle. I mean, if it were going to up one sixty eight twenty, we're talking about a really massive candle. So. Wouldn't expect more than that today. And that's why if you're looking at uh, this pound dollar, a potential hook back to support would be a better R2R uh, setup because uh, of the fact that we've already moved pretty, a pretty decent amount today. Not to say that the break wouldn't be good, but the problem is that if we break, how much can we expect more? Well, maybe a decent amount. But um, obviously, the relationship, the ratio, is different upon the breakout than upon the pullback. But the question, of course, always is: is that when we pull back, uh, do we bounce at these moving averages or not? There's less confirmation. Although at the moment that is looking like a decent probability. Uh, from a swing trade perspective though, I think that uh, if uh, obviously we don't reach the minus 272 target at 170 today, I do think that if we break above this orange, there could be a good breakout trade that has the potential of getting that high. Bob is saying there's news in 30 minutes. Let's take a look. Let's see. We had Spanish unemployment change, which was uh, actually positive. Well, that's great news. And we have pound construction PMI in 30. So that's something. It's medium impact, but still be careful of that indeed. That, uh, you know, depending on the news, the value of that news, it could be actually either the acceleration for the breakout or it could give cause for the currency to retrace deeper down. With deeper down, I mean that we could see, let me go back to the 15, that news event could cause it to, to spike up and break above or it could cause a spike down and probably we'll see support kick in still. But Well, folks, other than that, I don't see any questions. So um, thank you so much for being here. And we'll be back tomorrow. We'll take a look at these moving averages again, but also add trend lines. And, uh, well, let me know if you ever have questions or if you prefer some particular method more than the others. Um, always will be uh, also interested to see your comments and questions, of course. So besides our live trading room in the morning, we have, of course, Tadantala speaking Wednesday evening and our usual webinars on Thursday as well. And uh, 
with that said, wish you all a great day. The organ.